part two of the Excel tutorial. And during this, we're going to make a scatter plot in Excel. So we've already had our raw data, multiplied it by a constant, found the average, found the st standard deviation. Okay, so the big question is how to make a plot that would be appropriate to turn in for your lab reports. Okay, so this is a very good data set to do to do this with because we have multiple responses so I'm going to show you how to place all of these on one Excel plot. And then we're going to also be able to plot the average and add in the standard deviation. Okay. So in this sort of data series most of the time you're going to want to insert a scatter plot. So what a scatter plot is is if you took like a piece of normal graph paper and generally time is on the x-axis and whatever your response is on the y-axis and you would take that paper and you would uh, you know measure it and figure out how far each diff part needed to be and you would draw in each individual plot and then each individual point and then draw a line through it to come up with a reasonable uh, correlate, correlative value. But Excel can do all of that for us and all we have to do is highlight the data that we want plot it. So for this, maybe we want, we want to look at each of these responses individually. And um, your instructor should be able to help you with wi which specific plot you would do if it is not a scatter plot. Otherwise, it's pretty safe to assume that it's a scatter plot if you've got time and responses. So you click, left click, normal, normal click, and drag to highlight the data that you want to plot. So we could include the average, but we don't have to. I'll show you how to include things after later. So now we go to the insert tab, normal click, left click, and we go to this charts. And this one that looks like a bunch of little dots and an L is insert an XY scatter or bubble chart. And if we left click, normal click on that little down arrow, it shows us all of these different options. And now if we hover our cursor over each of the options, it can show us. Um, what each one would look like. Kind of interesting. So the bubble one is definitely the least useful for <laughs> this particular set of data. The best option here is the plane scatter that does not have lines attached to it. We are going to add our own trend lines that have actual scientific merit. These just connect the dots for you. This doesn't actually mean anything. And you can see in this response too, which is shown as orange here, it has this big dip in it. So that could, that dip could be very, very significant, meaning towards the data, and this um, like sort of wiggly line doesn't represent anything other than bringing attention to the fact that you have a point that's an outlier. So you want, you want to pick the plot that doesn't have lines in it already. We're going to add our own. So you left click to select, and we've got a whole bunch of data here and it has, just says chart title, which is really generic, and we've got all of these different series. So this is series one, series two, series three. So what we want to do first is do a quick layout that gives us an option for axis titles. You can pick any one of these that has axis titles, but be sure to follow the directions specified in your lab report if specified at all. Otherwise, you can pick what you'd like. I think this one's pretty attractive too pick this one. So axis title, the x-axis should always be time in seconds or whatever your units are. Time in minutes. And the y-axis here is our response and whatever units that we need for that. Okay. So, and just, we should verify that this was actually plotted correctly, and instead of just assuming. So we look at time point one for response one, and it's 1.26. So if our time is one, we should have a blue dot at about 1.26. And you can see that this is correct. So this was plotted correctly, with time on the x-axis and response on the y-axis. So we are, we are good to go. So one of the first things that you're going to want to do is to add in a trend line because that is the line that has actual scientific merit. In order to add in a trend line, you can hover over 
any one of these points and you right click, special click. And you can see that this pops up a little menu. And let's see because we've chose an orange dot that we're starting with response to. You can do this in any order, it doesn't matter. So you see on this little menu, our options here are to delete. So we can delete this whole data series. We can reset to match style. We can change the series chart type. We can select data. So if you realize that this is the wrong data and you needed to pick something else, you can click that. We can add a data label. So if we wanted to include this value, that would be the, uh, the option for us. We can add a trend line. That's what we want to do. Or we can format the data series. So what we want to do is add the trend line. And when we do this, we see it's in a cute little matchy color, and we have different trend line options. So again, this depends on what sort of lab that you're doing, but most of the time, you're going to be doing a linear lab. So not exponential or logarithmic or polynomial or et cetera, et cetera. Most of the time is linear. So this is the automatic selection, so we don't have to do anything there trend line name so you can add it so the trend line name is automatically linear and then whatever the the title is you can change it it doesn't matter it's not going to show up on the plot so if you needed your trend line to go through the origin this forecast is how you would do it and you can go forward so if you wanted the trend line to extend to the right you would add maybe one period there. If you needed it to go backwards, you'd maybe add one period there or a little bit more. And you can see that it extends the trend line uh, to, to show where it would hit the hit the y-axis. You can also, if needed, set the intercept equal to zero. This is very, very important in some labs and is less important in other labs, so you should definitely follow the directions to determine whether or not to set the in intercept through zero. I typically don't, unless somebody specifically tells me to. Because this way you can see more error, if there is any. The next two options are display the equation on the chart. You always want this. If you have a trend line, you want to see the equation on the chart because this line has a slope that is determined by this equation and without the equation expressly stated on the the plot you're not going to be able to figure it out on your own so this makes grading it so much easier and it makes interpreting it so 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 much easier and as you can see now our our options over here have changed because now we've clicked text and you know you can you can make this pretty and you can change colors and all of that but to get back to trend line you just click on normal left click on the trend line and we're back to our trend line options so you definitely want the equation on the chart for a linear um, line for a linear trend line and whenever you have a linear trend line you should also display the r squared value on the chart so what the R squared value tells you is basically how well this line goes through the middle of each of these points. And you can think of it like percentages. So 100% would be correct. So an R would be a perfect, right? So an R squared value of 1 is perfect. This is an R squared value of 0.9199. So that's still an A, right? It's a 92%. This is an A. So this is really, really good. So this trend line that was drawn pretty much goes through the middle of every single point. But you can see this one's a little above, this one's a little below, but in general it goes through the middle. So that's what the R squared value means. So now we can go through, and we don't have to close this or anything, but we can do the same, adding trend lines to each of these other points so that we can look at all of them together. So you add a trend line, linear, display, display. Scoot it over. Okay, so we already did orange. Last one is orange and blue. So now we need gray. So and it doesn't matter which point you pick as long as it is the correct color. So add a trend line, linear, display equation, display arc squared value. Okay, so now we come to a conundrum that we've got 
all of these different numbers going around here, and our R squared values are all really great. Woohoo, made up data. But that's beyond the point. The problem is that we have all of these different equations and we can't tell them apart. So if you hover over it, it'll tell you like this is trend line one. And this one is trend line three, and this one's trend line two then. However, when you print this, no one can ho hover over it because the cursor isn't there. So what you can do, so what I did is just click, click on the box, click inside, press enter, and then you can label them. So for example, this was trend line one. And that's how you would do this. Trend line two, and then trend line three. 